Hello everyone, Godre here, and this is my money brief. Um, well, I always said whenever I want to do money brief, it has to be something very important that I want to share. What I want to explain, and it's not even up to uh, a day yet, maybe just like eight hours, and I'm already getting messages, uh, people trying to tell me to explain uh, the latest inflation numbers that they have just seen to a lot of people it is almost like magic. Well, to those of us who uh, track inflation numbers, well, it's not really magic. Uh, it's more of just, you know, how how um, data works. Anyway, so uh, in case you're wondering what the inflation number is, inflation number is currently 24.48%. All of a sudden, we just went from 34% to 24.48%, huge 10% drop uh, in just one month. So how did that happen? Well, I'll be explaining that in my money brief. All right, so um, during the, the the year, I think late last year, we did explain that the central bank, what am I saying, the MBS, National Bureau of Statistics, uh, was going to rebase uh, inflation numbers and GDP numbers. So rebasing essentially is just saying, look, if you're gonna be comparing one period against another, uh, the base period will change the year. I think I explained that in one of my previous money briefs and you can check that out. So the rebasing they did this time was to choose a new base year, which is 2024. But beyond that changing the base year, uh, they also essentially changed the weighting of, um, of components that we measure as inflation. And I'm just going to call out some here quickly. So food, food and beverage inflation now is now 40%. It used to be 51.8%. Uh, and then um, let's go to another big one. Housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels used to be 16.7%. So before, between food and housing, food and non-alcoholic beverages, as well as housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels, which was which is bundled together, uh, was was about 70 something percent of our entire you know basket of what we measure in terms of inflation but of course nigerians consume a whole lot more things a diverse basket of things so is that weighting still reflective of what nigerians spend their money on i guess the, the answer is probably uh no and that's why um the mbs decided to change the composition of what we measure and so you now have food inflation go from 51.8% to 40%. You now have housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels go from 16.7% to 8.4%, right? Then you, you now have increases. You now have transport, which I guess Nigeria spent a lot of money on transport, uh, go from 6.5% to 10.7%. You see, that's an increase. And then you now have Information and communication, because we spend a lot on data and calls, go from 0.7% to 3.3% of the entire weight. So information and, and communication is basically more than triple, right? Uh, in terms of the, their, their percentage. And then, of course, you now have restaurants and accommodation services. This is one that I really don't get, to, but I guess they are assuming that a lot of Nigerians spend money eating out in restaurants. Right, and restaurants could be just your regular mama puta and any of these places, not just the posh ones. But restaurants and accommodation services uh, went from one point two percent to twelve point nine percent of what we what we what we rebase. So now, essentially, that would obviously impact how inflation is calculated. But then, is there is that the reason why inflation has all of a sudden just gone from thirty something percent to twenty four point four percent? Well, something else that they also did, they also changed. Uh, they also added, they increased the number of things that they tend to measure. So let me look for that, 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 that data here. So we tend to measure before 740 products, 740 items. Uh, and then now we now measure 934. So they've increased the number. So imagine that maybe before they used to add sardine as one of those things Nigerians eat a lot. But what if we don't eat sardine anymore? What if we eat noodles more? Right? So they essentially switched that. Then they also did a lot of classifications. Instead of having 1,999 divisions, uh, 12, 12 divisions of Bagapagan in 1999, they now have 13 divisions as well. Uh, then in terms of how they collect their data, they said they move from paper to digitalized form of, of collecting data. Anyway, that's basically what, what they've, they've sent to, to, ch to change. And one of the important things that they changed was what they call the relative index. So they've gone from long-term relative to short-term relative indexes. I don't want to bore you guys with all that jargon. The key thing is how did we go from 34% to 24.4%? We haven't seen the breakdown of those numbers. But one thing that I did notice was the base 
for January 2024 was 88.9, right? That's the base that they use, which is the composite index, assuming that you remember what I told you about all the things you have in that own basket. So that whole basket, all their prices put together and then figuring out what the composite base index is was 88.9. And then January 2025 is 110.68. So if you do the percentage change between the base of January 2024 and 2025, it essentially gives you 24.48% inflation rate. That's how we got there. But let me try and explain it to you in a way that maybe you might understand easily. Now, imagine how much you paid for maybe yam in January last year compared to now. It's very likely that the difference between how much you paid for yam in January last year versus now may really not be more than, say, 30% or even 40% increase, right? But yam is just one aspect of all the things that you're measuring. Now, but imagine how much you paid for yam in 2023 or 2022 versus 2025. It's probably more than double. You see that? But in this calculation that MBS is doing, they no longer use that old base. You see that? So they're basically not using that calculation anymore. So the new one now is the prices as at 2024. So realistically, the prices as of 2024 versus now would obviously be not as high as 2024 versus 2023 because when we did experience huge price jumps in Nigeria was in 2024 compared to 2023. However, in 2025, we're just in January, I think you to a large extent uh, agree that the price jump between January 2024 and January 2025 might not be that high because we're still around the same period where we're seeing high, you know, where we're all experiencing an increase in cost of goods and services. The same thing, let, let's even look at say um, um, February or March last year. At some point, diesel was over 1,001, but it's probably lower now, isn't it? So you do realize that there are certain items that are expensive last year, but when you now compare them to this year, they might not be that expensive because you've already absorbed that price change last year. Can I just try and break it down a little bit more? So let's, okay, let's use uh, a TV. So in 20, or an, an air condition in 2023, say a one horsepower air conditioning, what air conditioner was probably 400K, right? Now in 2024, that one horsepower is probably now 700K. So you see, we've gone from 400K to 700K in 2024. So between 2023 and 2024, you, that's when you experience that huge inflation. But between that 700K of 2024, and January, the difference is probably just maybe it's gone from 700K to maybe 720K or there about 730K because it's still within that period when that price did increase. So that is what I think is going on here and why you saw inflation drop like that. I mean, but to a lot of Nigerians, I'm sure doesn't really reflect your reality. And yes, it doesn't because you still kind of feel that hangover of price increases that we that we experienced the whole of 2024. But I'm pretty sure that hangover might not be as much as it was in 2025, January, because I mean, a lot of people have seen that fuel prices have, fall, have gone down, how much you pay for your tank is no longer what it is today. Uh, transportation has gone up, but it hasn't gone up in January compared to maybe a few months before. But if you want to look at January versus say two years ago, then you know that it's gone up. So that essentially uh, is my own explanation of why inflation rate is 24 point for 8% in January. Now, is this a good thing? Well, it has its own good because it does mean that, well, everything falls as well because NPR is likely going to go down. That's just money policy rate that the central bank uses to sort of manage in the economy or the uh, interest rates in the, in the economy. So that means interest rate on your loans might probably go down. You might see interest rates on a cross board also go down. Uh, you might see prices also be adjusted as well. But 
Of course, there's credibility issues around all of these things because it just looks like a lot of magic. Uh, I guess maybe the MBS needs to come out and explain it a lot better, uh, provide a bit more data into how that composition of CPI was actually done. Uh, I mean, we know the metrics, we know the indices, but the real calculation itself, uh, I think it should just be subject to some kind of external scrutiny. Let people just see it and be pretty sure because Nigerians do want to know how we've gone down. So again, uh, it doesn't mean that things are all of a sudden better. It's just inflation, inflation at the end of the day is just how you measure prices between one period and another. So the base has been shifted and that is why it kind of looks like inflation has dropped. And I'm sure uh, you would agree with me that the price between January and now might not be as significantly different as maybe two years ago, January and today. That is my money brief uh, for today. And um, as I always say, do have a profitable week ahead. If you have any questions or any comments, go there and explain. Maybe you can explain it better than I did. Uh, we all learn from each other. That is it. Bye.